Welcome to my second ever attempt at carving stones. I'm just kind of limiting myself to the simple hand tools that we have around because I'm not a sculpture artist, obviously. So I know that there are lots of interesting Dremel tools and table saws and stuff that would make this so much faster. But I'm pretty much just limiting myself to um, just some small hand files and sandpaper at the end. This is a pretty piece of alabaster. My first video was soapstone and I bought this little piece of rock a few years ago just because it's really inexpensive and I just grabbed it off of the shelf. I didn't really know what to do with it and I just kind of hoarded this little rock in a box for a couple years and I thought about what I wanted to do with it and could never really think of anything and when I finally pulled it out of the box I realized that you can't really think of something to make and then make it. You really need to see what the stone already kind of looks like. Let the stone decide. So my piece was this kind of not terribly useful flat chunk that honestly just kind of said butterfly to me. I went with more of a moth shape. And this process is just a really long impatient process of just grinding this thing down. It feels like it takes forever. And I'm a painter. I'm used to being, you know, instantly gratified. <laughs> Something comes into um, shape right away. And there's a limit to how long that I can actually do this kind of thing because it does cause a lot of hand pain to be gripping things for an hour or two hours at a time. And alabaster specifically contains a lot of silica dust, which is really bad for you. So a mask would be good and I'm also doing this outside on my balcony. I would never do something like this indoors. <laughs> I'm not pushing too hard with the files. I'm trying to resist trying to rush the process because when you're like pushing the file really hard against the rock, that's when it's gonna slip and nick your little skin, especially if you're not wearing gloves. <laughs> like, like me. I, I thought about wearing gardening gloves or something but they, they were really dirty so I'm just I just decided to kind of take it slow and gentle. Honestly, it goes a little bit faster than you think it is. And getting it down to that moth shape is just the most unexciting part of it. And honestly, getting into carving the actual details that I wanted um, wasn't really any more satisfying because again, of how slow it is and how painful it is to be gripping these tools and uh, just hacking at it for an hour or two. Now, anytime that I want to try a new project or a new media, I usually want to try something different. And so I thought it would be really cool to embed some, you know, resin stones into it. And so at the end, that's like the new thing that I decided to try out. The front was really, really hard to get the sanding process, but the back, the back was a dream to sand. and that's actually kind of where most of the stone's beauty is. As soon as I started sanding the back, all of a sudden I could see all the really cool flaws and cracks in the rock. So yeah, I did all of this work and decorated the front, but honestly I think the back is the coolest part <laughs> because of the stone. To add the stones to the rock, I decided to mix together a little bit of this art resin and it seems to work really well. It also meant that I had to have a nice little project on the side to use the leftover resin for, which you will see soon. <laughs> 